On the night of August 15, 1936, in Pueblo, Colorado, Dorothy Drain's parents returned home to find the 15-year-old daughter dead. She was in a pool of blood, killed by a single blow to the head while she was asleep. The younger daughter, Barbara, was also hit in the head, but somehow survived. The attack on the Drain sisters drove the town into a frenzy and the newspapers declared a sex-crazed murderer was on the loose, and the police started the search for a Mexican-looking man described by two women who claimed they were also attacked not far from the Drain residence. The police were desperate to catch the killer, and Sheriff George Carroll was under a lot of pressure from the community and media. Soon after, a 21-year-old man named Joe Arady was arrested while wandering aimlessly near the local railroads and he confessed the crimes outright. Joe had always been highly suggestible and he was a handicapped young man with a very low IQ. His IQ was only 46, and Aradi could be coerced into saying, or doing anything. Joe Aradi's parents were Syrian immigrants, which contributed to his dark complexion as described by the two other women who claimed that they had also been accosted in Pueblo. His mother and father were also first cousins, which may have contributed to his imbecility, which the newspapers delighted in referring to. Several of Aradi's siblings had died young and one of his other brothers was also reported to be a high moron, and Joe Aradi himself seems also to have suffered due to his family's inbreeding. Aradi had been committed to the Colorado State Home and Training School for Mental Defectives in Grand Junction when he was just 10 years old. He would be in and out of the home for the next several years until he finally ran away after he turned 21. Aradi spoke slowly, could not identify colors and had trouble repeating back sentences that were longer than a couple of words. The superintendent of the state home where Aradi had lived recalled that he was often taken advantage of by the other boys, who once got him to confess to stealing cigarettes, although he could not possibly have done it. Perhaps Sheriff Carroll realized the same thing that these other boys once had. Joe Aradi was extremely susceptible to suggestion. Carroll did not even bother to write down the confession he got from Aradi. During the trial, even the prosecution noted, You had to, what we commonly say, pry everything out of him. Carroll's leading questions included asking Aradi if he liked girls, then immediately following up with, If you like girls so well, why do you hurt them? Given such unfair coercive questioning, Aradi's testimony changed swiftly depending on who was interrogating him, and he remained ignorant of some of the most basic details of the murders, until they were told to him, such as the fact that the weapon used had been an axe. It should have been clear to everyone involved that Joe Aradi wasn't guilty, and that another man actually was. It seems most likely that the person actually responsible for the killings was Frank Aguilar, a Mexican man who was found guilty of the murders and executed after being identified by Barbara Drain. All of this took place while Aradi was still being held for the murders himself, but local law enforcement was convinced that Aguilar and Aradi had been partners in the crimes. Either way, even Aguilar's execution does not seem to have stemmed the public outrage in Pueblo. So, despite the fact that the three psychiatrists who testified at Aradi's trial declared him mentally handicapped with an IQ of 46, Aradi too was found guilty and sentenced to death. The basis for Joe Aradi's defense was that he was not legally sane and, therefore, incapable of distinguishing between right and wrong, and would be unable to perform any action with criminal intent. Because Aradi reportedly struggled to explain simple things like the difference between a stone and an egg, it's understandable to think that he would not in fact, know right from wrong. It also seems, perhaps mercifully, that he failed to understand the concept of death entirely. Prison warden Roy Best reported that Joe Aradi is the happiest man who ever lived on death row and when Aradi was informed of his impending execution, he seemed much more interested in his toy trains. When asked what he wanted for his last meal, Aradi requested ice cream. On January 6, 1939, after happily giving his beloved toy train to another inmate, Aradi was led to the gas chamber, where he grinned as the guards strapped him into the chair. His execution was fairly swift, although Warden Best is reported to have cried in the chamber. Gail Ireland, the attorney who had petitioned the Colorado Supreme Court on Aradi's behalf, had written during the case. Believe me when I say, that if he is gassed it will take a long time for the state of Colorado to live down the disgrace. It was not actually until 2011, more than seven decades after Aradi's execution, that Colorado Governor Bill Ritter granted him a posthumous pardon. Pardoning Aradi cannot undo this tragic event in Colorado history.
It is in the interests of justice and simple decency, however, to restore his good name. Joe was reported to have smiled while being taken to the gas chamber and was only momentarily nervous until the warden grabbed his hand and reassured him. The warden stated, he probably didn't even know he was about to die. All he did was happily sit and play with a toy train I had given him. He showed blank bewilderment when asked about the execution and told the warden. No, no, Joe won't die. After eating his last meal, the priest reciting his last rites told Joe that he'd have to give up his toy train as he'd get a golden harp in return. Then, on his way to the gas chamber, he was quoted as saying, I want to play the harp like the padre told me. On Joe Aridy's grave they wrote, Here lies an innocent man. Pardoned on January 7, 2011. Sheriff Carroll probably never got to play the Golden Harp for this injustice, and the $1,000 reward he got for catching Aridy were not enough to escape his own judgment, and he is probably executed in a gas chamber in hell every day for eternity.